<clears throat> hey guys, what's going on? It is Speedy of Terrier Productions coming to you with yet another video review. And today, I'm going to be returning to my somewhat not so <clears throat> to my somewhat not so usual traits of recording a film review. Um, in case the presence of both Crosshairs and the Hark Team Bumblebee action figures haven't given it away, today I shall be reviewing the brand new Transformers film, Transformers Age of Extinction. Honestly, I enjoyed it. <clears throat> I enjoyed it. I, I, I mean, it, it was, it was a really, really good, it, uh, no, that's just me overselling it. Um. It, it it was a good film. It was a good film. I will say it. It was miles better than Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen. Um, it wasn't as good as the first live action film. Um, and I'd say it was about on the same playing field as Transformers: Dark of the Moon. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, a a again, I liked it. I thought it was a good film. Um, I've actually been to see it twice. The first time I went to see it was on the UK opening date, July the 5th, 2014. Um, and I went to see it in 3D as well. Yeah, word of advice, if you are planning on going to see Transformers Age of Extinction, stay away from the 3D screenings, because to be honest, that the 3D didn't work. That the 3D didn't work. It honestly it it just I no. I swear, if you own a 3D TV and are looking to get Transformers Age of Extinction on a 3D Blu-ray DVD combi then I'm afraid to say you will have wasted your money. Because from where I was sitting, the 3D, it, it just didn't work at all. You, you know, like, when uh, people say that the 3D effects in all the films from, like, the 80s and the 90s were really good, they had things actually coming out at you and, and whatnot. That's... that's the proper definition of a 3D film is something being right up here and in your face. Age of Extinction, none of that. Absolutely none. There was not one shot where the effect was almost as if you could touch it. So that was a bit of a mistake. And to be honest, that actually threw me. It, it really did, because I spent... Eight pounds and seventy pence on my ticket to go and see the new Transformers film at my local Cine World, and it's safe to say that I walked out of that screening room at the end of the film not a very happy bunny. For two reasons, this is mainly about the screening. The first reason is because none of the three D effects worked, and two, at the end of the first live action Transformers film. And I believe at the end of Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, they had some epilogue clips to show how Sam, Michaela and Sam's parents had, had moved on, given the fights with the Transformers had been and gone. Dark of the Moon, they didn't have any epilogue shots, which I... Uh, okay, I can understand that. But the fact that Age of Extinction didn't have any epilogue shots was terrible. So, in short, as soon as the last shot of the film finished, I spent the next ten minutes after that watching the end credits to see if there was going to be any sign of any epilogue footage, and there wasn't, which is pretty damn disappointing. Um, but anyway, I, went, I then went back to see it today, uh, Wednesday, July the 9th, 2014, and I thought it was a good film. I'm going to lay my cards right here on the table, or desk in this case, and I am going to say that it was a good film. 
Now, don't get me wrong, those of you who have seen Age of Extinction as well, naturally, your opinion is open, and I naturally, I accept your opinion, but I'm just throwing my opinion down right here on the table when I say that I thought Transformers Age of Extinction was a good film. The first good thing about it was the fact that I didn't see it in 3D, and it looked so much better in 2D, which is the really ironic thing. Uh, but yeah, there were, when I went to see it in 3D, I only counted five good things about the film, right? The animation, the soundtrack, the choice of cars that they used, a cameo by Rainbow Dash from the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic series, and there's one scene that got me smiling like there was no tomorrow. And that scene is where the Autobots regroup at an old, abandoned locomotive yard. And I, I just, you know, I'm a massive, massive locomotive fan. So, um, uh, so yeah. Um, having went back and seen it as well, uh, today... Those five things are the five things that still stand out to me the most, and some other things. Um, like, for example, there was one part in the film where um, Mark Wahlberg, uh, Nicole the Pelts, uh, TJ Miller, and... Ah, uh, fuck, I can't remember the name of the actor who played Shane. Uh, Tessa's boyfriend. I can't remember the name of his actor, but there's one scene in the film where they're being chased by these big military SUVs. And it's just basically a massive chase scene that shows, that pretty much sets the baseline for Shane's character. Shane's character being that he likes two things more than life itself in the entire world. His girlfriend, Tessa, played by Nicola Peltz, and driving anything that has four wheels, a steering wheel, and over 300 horsepowers. So, uh, so yeah, that was, that was actually a really, really cool chase scene. Credit where credit's due, it was, it was very well choreographed, it looked absolutely incredible. Um... And surprisingly, despite this being a Michael Bay film where there are like usually close-up shots of a girl's ass in a short skirt or in some short shorts or whatever, to their credit, they only had one sexual innuendo in that chase scene. So, I, I mean, alright, fair play. Again, it was the one innuendo, so... Um... There was also another really cool scene. This happened after the chase scene. Uh, with Shane's car and the... And the military SUVs. There was one scene where Optimus is driving down this two-lane road in the middle of what looks like nowhere. And this white truck passes. And anyway, Optimus passes this truck in his evasion mode form, which is a homage to the Kenworth flat nose truck that he had as his vehicle mode back in the G1 continuity. Anyway, this blue beam shoots out of Optimus. He scans the truck, and while Optimus's truck mode is still rolling, he shifts from this old flat-nosed Kenworth to this heavily modified Western Star 4700 Phantom. And I just, oh my. Oh my. God. That is one sexy-ass truck. I don't care who you are or what you say. You cannot argue with the fact that Optimus Prime's new vehicle mode is one sexy-ass truck. It is. I'm sorry, but it, it just, it fucking is. Um. 
What are the scenes that were good and slash or funny? Um, well, there was one scene I seem to recall where um, uh, where Stanley Tucci's character, um, Joshua Joyce, I think his name was called. I think the name of the character was. Um, and here, Mark Wahlberg's character, Katie Yeager, they're both running down this Chinese alley, carrying a Cybertronian seed. And they get caught behind three elderly Chinese women. Anyway, Stanley Tucci's character, he looks over his shoulder to Mark Wahlberg's character. And back at these three old elderly Chinese women. To which he then utters this line that had the whole screening room in... Oh, I swear, everyone in the screening room was in a giggling fit, both when I went to see it today and when I went to see it on its opening day. And this line was, how do you say get the fuck out of the way in Chinese? I, everyone was in hysterics. So my tip, my hat tips off to whoever came up with that line, because that was a line of pure comedy bliss. Um... So with that said and done, I guess I should really talk about some of the uh, some of the new characters that uh, that were introduced in Age of Extinction. Well, we had Mark Wahlberg's character, Kate Yeager, who is a uh, who's a mechanic slash inventor. Um, I just you know he's he's one of those people who's. He's a bit downplayed. He's a bit down on his luck, um, and and whatnot. Um, I I mean like that. Uh, Mark Wahlberg was very good in Transformers: Age of Extinction. Outside of Age of Extinction, however, I have only seen Mark Wahlberg in one other film. <laughs> And that film is, if I can get the case, Ted. Now, if you haven't seen this film, I recommend doing so. Because Mark Wahlberg was very good in Ted, and he's very good in Transformers Age of Extinction. So, yeah. Um, then we have uh, Nicole the Pelts, who played... Cade's daughter, Tessa. Um, and her character was... was a bit of a mixed bag, to be honest. Her character was... Basically, Nicola Peltz was playing the role of a 17-year-old who had just finished college and was in that in that gap where she finishes her college course and then starts gearing herself up for her college graduation ceremony. And I... <sighs> Again, Nicola Peltz's character, a bit of a mixed bag, to be honest. And to be honest, I haven't actually seen Nicola Peltz in anything else. So I don't really... So I can't really think of another film... Uh, to compare her with. Then we had uh, T.J. Miller. Um, who played one hell of a lucky son of a bitch. And I only say that because the car that we see T.J. Miller's character drive. Until he, up to the point where he gets killed by lockdown. Was actually a Rover Mini. He was driving an original Mini. Now, I fucking love this car. Much to the extent where I want one as my first car. I just... Oh, I was so jealous of the bastard. But at the same time, so hateful of him as well. Not because he had a Mini, but because he'd fucking modified it. Who modifies a Mini? A Mini is a Mini. You don't toy with it. Despite it being a toy-sized car, I will admit, but that's by the by. Um, then we come to Shane, Tessa's boyfriend, 
who actually has my dream job. Uh, he's a race car driver. Yeah. Yeah, fucking race car driver. And, uh... And, yeah. And, I... Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, like, there, there were some pretty funny parts between Mark Wahlberg's character and, uh, Shane... Where, uh, where K. Diego kept nicknaming him stuff like Lucky Charms and Speed Racer. Uh, the reason why he kept nicknaming him Lucky Charms was because Shane is half Irish, half American. Which was... Well, that was interesting, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Um, anyway, moving on to new Transformers characters, we have Lockdown, whose voice actor I can't remember the name of. Now, Lockdown was a very, very interesting character in the film. I mean, let's be honest, he's also one of those characters who's kind of hard to ignore, because his vehicle mode is a fucking Lamborghini Aventador. Or... If you like the technical specs of cars, the last car the Lamborghini has ever produced with a V12. And I just... Beautiful. I just... Seriously. Lockdown was an absolutely fantastic character in the film. And I actually do think that he was a good choice to bring in as the fil as one of the film's main antagonists. Because Lockdown's character was absolutely fantastic. He was the full he was a full blown bounty hunter. As he is with every other Transformers continuity. That uh how many that uh, the Lockdown's been involved in. And so yeah, that was that was pretty interesting. Uh, then we have Galvatron, whose vehicle mode was a flat nose Argosy truck, all in silver and black. Real mean looking fucker. Really looked the part. And the most unusual thing was that they had Galvatron voiced by Frank Welker who voiced Megatron in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Now, I'm sorry, but can someone out there please explain to me how Galvatron in Age of Extinction sounds anything like Frank Welker? Because from where I was sitting, he didn't sound anything at all like Frank Welker. Which just sucked. As opposed to, like, you know, the fact that they had Peter Cullen voice Optimus Prime throughout all four of the live-action Transformers films that have been released thus far. Um, uh, yeah. Um, and then, of course, near the end of the film, in about, like, the last... I'd say somewhere in between the last 20 to 35 minutes of the film, we get introduced to the Dinobots. And I just fucking... Why? As, uh, fucking... Why? Why the fuck do we have the Dinobots now in the live-action Transformers films? Okay? They were okay back in the G1 continuity of, 19, of the 1980s. Because... That was the first generation of the Transformers franchise, and they were relatively new characters. Okay? Transformers Animated, I felt like they were pushing their boundaries a little bit. Transformers Age of Extinction? I am sorry, but from where I'm sitting, the Dinobots have been taken out of their comfort zone entirely. So thank Christ Optimus let them go at the end of Age of Extinction. Thank fucking Christ for that. Touch wood, we never see them ever again. Um. Yeah, and then, and we had a uh, a man-made Decepticon called Stinger, 
Now, Stinger was actually an interesting design, simply for the fact that his vehicle mode was a Pagani Wira. Now, if you haven't seen this car, I recommend you pause this video right now, go over to Google Images, and type in Pagani Wira. Prepare to have your minds blown, because... Ah... Uh, it's a fucking beautiful car, and I cannot wait until Hasbro release the Stinger action figure, because I reckon that's going to be a very, very good representation of the car. Um... What else was there? Um, there's actually one really good scene where Bumblebee and Shane were in this massive display room where they had Stinger. They had one of the Stinger drones, and then they had a Pagani wire next to it. And they've got all these monitors around in the display room with this woman going, Stinger! Inspired by Bumblebee, and you just see Bumblebee flip his lid, because all these designers kept saying how ugly and stupid looking Bumblebee was, and it was, oh, fuck me, that had to be one of the funniest scenes in the film. Just simply for the fact that Shane's there trying to calm Bumblebee down from everything that's been said. And Bumblebee's there grabbing Stinger by the throat. No, no, it's fine. Look, I'm barely touching it. I'm barely touching it. And of course, Bumblebee knocks Stinger over. And just like that, Bumblebee's back in his vehicle mode. This actual vehicle mode, to be honest. And then as soon as this administrator walks in, he goes, What the hell do you think you're doing? Well, words to that effect. And... All, and from Bumblebee stereos, all you hear is a line from MC Hammer's Can't Touch This. I swear, the crowd were in fucking hysterics. And, oh, God. I just, that was really, that was really clever, I think. Um... So that's all the new characters that we had in regards of man-made Transformers slash Decepticons slash Dinobots. Now we get onto the important topic of the new Autobots that were introduced in Age of Extinction. One of them was, of course, Crosshairs. Um, bit of an interesting character, Crosshairs, actually. He was a bit like... He's... A bit like a combination of Jazz from the first film and Sideswipe from both Revenge of the Fallen and Dark of the Moon. In the sense that Crosshairs had that sort of... He had that sort of vibe going for him. He had that sort of vibe um, that sort of gave off the whole I'm here to kick ass and chew gum and I'm all out of gum uh, attitude. And I, uh, it suited him down to a T, to be honest. Um, and one of the really cool things about him as well was the fact that he has an Australian accent, from what I can tell at least. So that was pretty cool. Uh, then of course we had Hound, whose vehicle mode was a giant six-wheel military truck. And he was voiced by John Goodman. Now, I will say it, I have seen John Goodman in two previous films that I've seen previously anyway. The 2008 Speed Racer film directed by the Wachowski brothers and the live-action Flintstones film when he played Fred Flintstone. Now, despite how bad the live-action Flintstones film was, John Goodman was really good in it, and it's the same story with Speed Racer. Now, I like the Speed Racer film. I more or less have to, because the words Speed Racer are two of the three parts of my YouTube username, so I don't really have much choice, do I? <laughs> and in the Speed Racer film, he played Speed Racer's father. And again, he was good in that. Him voicing Hound in Transformers Age of Extinction? No exception whatsoever. He was absolutely fantastic. And he actually had quite a few funny lines as well. Um, one line was, 
I'm a fat ballerina who shoots guns and slits throats. And I just, oh, fuck. I was probably the only person in the theatre, or in the screen room at least, who knew what he said at that point. I just, uh, brilliant. Just a freaking brilliant. Anyway, that concludes part one of the review.